Let's read 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John 5, 7. The blood and the name. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The word, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Verse 8 is where I'm really going. And there are three, another three, that bear witness on the earth. The spirits, the water, and the blood. So the first part says, the Father, the Word, and the spirits. Now the spirits, the water, which is the Word, and the blood. I want to begin talking about something very serious this morning. The blood of Jesus. Yeah. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Your victory is certain. Yes. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. What I just want to start with this morning, it could take us weeks talking about this. What is it with God and the blood? Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. And then we'll take our seats after this. Exodus 12. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. When God has to remind man that he is God, it's a serious matter. In all the plagues, he never really said this at the beginning. He never told Moses how many rounds that the plagues will go. But when he got to the matter of the blood, he said, I will bring one more plague. And this time around, Pharaoh's backbone will be broken. He said, but we have to do it by the blood. What is it with this stuff? Can I have your seat? God bless you. We will have to journey. Ziko parish to lay Wherever we stop today, we stop. The first thing I want to call the attention of the church, those who are here and those who are watching, there is something in the blood. The blood means something to God that we might not fully understand until we get to the other side. But we can begin through the scripture to understand what is it about this red substance. So when they were going to leave Egypt, the Lord said, this is what you do. I need a spotless lamb. And we are going to explain all this. Why spotless lamb? Which was very expensive to get in those days. And I need a family. He said maximum 15 people per lamb. This is why household is important. Again, we'll talk about that another time. I'm dealing with nation of Israel. That's what the Lord said. He said, but you are not going to eat it as a nation. You are going to divide yourself into a set of 15. And if a family cannot afford a lamb, join your neighbor. And he said, I put the blood on the post of the door and on the lintel, but not on the ground. And then he told them to use something called Aesop. To splash the blood, not their hand, and not to pour the pockets. We will explain that one again. Because we are going to move from point to point. And the first point I want to start with today is that the blood speaks. When Cain killed Abel, so the Lord said, put the blood in those three places. 
this side of the door, this side of the door, and the one joining it, they bounce up. And he said, here is the deal. Anyone who comes out will die. But if you stay inside, when the angel of destruction, a personality again that we'll talk about, it is referred to the book of Revelation as Abaddon, Apollyon, those two names. He visited Egypt in the night. Even though the things sounded like God said, I will visit. What God did was to allow the enemy to have a free swell that night. And people died. Down to the firstborn of animals. The lesson to learn from that is this. Destructions can see. Angel of death can see. They no firstborn from secondborn. Even of animals. I can't die the death of someone else. Is somebody with me? When death comes through a protest and bullets are flying, that's what Jesus said, that even the ear of your head, they are numbered. Angels of death, they know they are targets. But you see, they don't play fear because Satan is wicked. Some cattle, like some animals, like dogs, like some uh, fowl animal, winged, winged animals, will give back to 12. How did the angel of death know that this is the firstborn? No mistake of kill, no second born was killed that night. Down to the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne. That one who died. So that means there is no body in this world that is not marked by God and by Satan. You are known. You are known. That's why I speak over everybody. You will never receive a parcel that is not yours. And Satan will never be able to lord anything over you. Is somebody with me? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That guy came and he was speaking firstborn, 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 firstborn of slave, firstborn of all the chiefs, firstborn of Pharaoh, firstborn of, and at the end of the day, all firstborns were gone. But the Lord told them that, see, when destruction is coming, this wicked spirit will come for everyone except those who have something that can prevent him. And what he recognizes is the blood. He said, take a lamb's blood and put it in these three places and stay inside all night long. Because it's a night operation. What is it about the blood? We have to go start from the beginning. Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. When Cain killed Abel, the Lord says something to Cain. So the first point I want to make is that blood says something to God. And there are two things that the blood does. Judgment and mercy. No middle cough. Judgment and mercy. When God told them to put the blood on their door, he told them that tonight... I'm judging Egypt. And when there is judgment, the only ransom is the blood. He said, I heard the voice in the, you know, sorry, Genesis 4 10. 4 10. Thank you. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood. Crying from the ground. Ah. So, Abel died, but the blood was talking to God. Matthew chapter 23, verse 35. Jesus spoke in anger to the Pharisees and he told them, Let's start from 34. Look at this. This will let you that God counts. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets 
and wise men and scribes was talking to the Pharisees. Some of them you killed and crucified. Some of them you scored in your synagogue and persecuted them from city to city. Next verse. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth. From the blood of righteous Abel, the first man to be killed, to the blood of Zachariah, son of Berechus, whom you slew be between the porch and the altar. Jesus said, guys, hear me very well. There is coming a time. Every blood shed in Israel, except from the first man that his brother killed, Abel, down to this Zechariah, probably you heard about the book of Zechariah in the Bible. He said, down to the last man, Zechariah, God knows all the number and you will pay. He was telling them. He said, so nobody missing. Third, thirdly, Revelation chapter 6. Hallelujah. Let's start from around verse 4. Are you following me? Is somebody following me? Yes, so that means God pays attention. Then we go to Noah in a while. He went with the sword and he killed. Verse 5. Let's start from 5. And when he had opened the third seal, or seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on it had a pair of balances. Verse 6. Seven. Let me skip all that. And he opened the fourth seal, and I heard the voice of the beast say, Come and see. What did he see? Verse 8. And I look and behold, they pay us. The name of the one written dead. Go down. Fifth seal is where I'm going, actually. But it will help to read to understand. And when they opened the fifth seal, I saw. What did he see? Under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony they carried. Not the people, their soul. Next verse. And they cried with a loud voice. This was their blood crying. Saying, how long, O Lord, only and true, how long will it take you to judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell upon the earth? And then God answered them. Verse 11. White robes were given to every one of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little more until the fellow servants, also of their brethren, that should be killed. This means God knows everybody that is to be killed. So John saw under the altar souls of martyrs, and the souls were crying, Lord, the people on earth must pay for the blood that is spilled. And God said, Yes. They will pay. I'm waiting for the number to be complete. He says, so re guys, rest. Just rest. Until, maybe you are 4,000 and you must get to 8,000. When it gets to that number, I will take vengeance. Our revenge. Or avenge you. Are you following me? Yes, as soon as Noah came out of the ark, the Lord gave a very strong warning. You can eat any animal. He said, but don't eat any animal with blood in it. That means, first of all, you must let the blood come out of the animal and enter the ground. Why? There is a covenant between God and blood. It must go back to God. Genesis chapter 9. Maybe we start from around verse 5 or so. Are you with me? Yes, sir. We are going to the precious blood of Jesus. We are just taking a journey to understand as soon, just stay in Genesis 9, please. As soon as Adam and Eve sinned, the Lord had to kill an animal. The Bible didn't say he killed, but the Bible said God covered them with the clothes, skin of an animal. He must have killed an animal. God was pointing to Christ. Adam and Eve, when they saw that they were naked, they used fig tree to cover themselves. There are two types of people on the face of the earth. Those who try to use fig to cover their sin, it's an effort in futility. And those who are covered by the blood. we we'll get to that in a while. And many times when people are confronted with the wrong things they have done, you either respond by, by fig or by blood. Yeah. The fig will give you honor for a while. You look clear before people. That's how people deny what they are. I didn't do it. And they argue, ah, no, 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 no. That's a fig. 
The blood is a man that comes with repentance. He is covered permanently. The difference between King Saul and King David. When Saul sinned, he told Samuel. As Samuel was confronting, he said, oh, this, he said, ah, come now. They are hearing what you are saying. He said, honor me in the prayers of this book. Don't do as if I've done something wrong. I know what Samuel honored him. He said, just follow me to go and wash him. And as they were walking around, Saul was doing like this, guys, everything is fine, you know. He didn't want them to know that he did something wrong. But look at the opposite reaction. When Nathan told David that you are the man, he said, I have sinned, and he fell. And God told Nathan, like, tell him that his iniquity is already put aside. He will not die for his sin. He said, even though he will pay some penalties, but I will have mercy. Somebody, two people confronted, one was concerned about people around I've always felt sorry for Christians who are concerned. That's the number one reason why some people don't tell the truth no matter what they do. They are thinking, what would they say? What would they say? What would they say? I don't know if I get what I'm saying. Yes, sir. It is in this secrecy, this darkness, that the power of evil thrives. Just don't ask some people a question about them. They are going to lie. I, if I thought you had said, they would say, I'm not exactly like that. Because they just don't want to accept that they've done something wrong. That is man talking. Man. As a carnality of a man. A spiritual man is a broken man. As Paul was facing panel, he said to the high priest, you whitewash storm, you sit down there trying to judge me. And somebody said, is that how you talk to the high priest? And Paul said, I am sorry, I did not know it. Bro spiritual people are broken. They know that they only stand before God. So when they repent of anything, you can continue to talk about it on earth. They know that in the sight of what is taken and they care about God, not about men. That's how they can open up at any time. You can continue to talk about their past. They know that they are moved. Yes. I know what I told you two weeks ago. For some reasons, God decided to record the errors of the people he loved in the Bible. He did not take it out. He wanted us to know that they were mortal men, but who found mercy. So the chapter that Moses killed somebody, 40 days on the mountain did not make God to hide it. God put it there. That Abraham lied, says that was a God left it there. He left it there. That David did all he did. He is still a man after God sat in heaven, but God let him. The record is there. And he said, Remove it. Don't let them know about this. That I did this. He left it there. But you are still naming your children David. <laughs> and I have a son that is David. You are still naming them David. This is the power of the mercy of God to those who have found mercy. Hallelujah. Surely, your blood. Let's start from verse 4. Verse 4. Or even three. Let's start from three. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb that I have given you all things. Next verse. But the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood, you must not eat. The Lord said that don't eat blood. Why? He said the life of the flesh is the blood. Next verse. And surely your blood of your lives I will require, even your own blood. At the end of every beast, so when an animal kills a man, the animal will answer. That's what God said. I will require. Because God is jealous about this red substance. And the hand of a man, the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of a man. Whether you kill the person softly or directly. Next verse. Also shedded man's blood. God is saying that I so much guide this thing called blood. I will personally supervise how it goes. If an animal takes it from a man, that animal will answer to me. If a man eats animal with the blood, that man will answer to me. Now, if a man takes it from another man, he will answer to me. 
He said, anyone who sheds a man's blood, it's a sad thing. Except the cross rescues him. By another man, he will also be killed. For man is in the image of God. Let's move it for the, why. We are still asking question why. Leviticus 17, 11 begins to answer it a little more, which is also equal to what we have seen here. The Bible says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. If you take a man, he is not sick, but you stab him, and you watch his blood drain. By the time the last blood comes out, his life is out. The Bible says that the life of the flesh, your life is coded in your blood. The life that sustains the flesh is in the blood. I am giving it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your soul. For it is blood that makes an atonement. This is where this message will really begin from. That means, what is mean of atonement? Covering. That was why God quickly slew an animal and covered Adam and Eve. So all through Old Covenants, and there are many scriptures we'll look at, every time they wanted to approach God, it demanded that it must be done through the passage of the blood. And it's like the more the blood, the more the supply of grace of life. Every time Balaam wanted to hear from God, he demanded for seven altars and a ram and a bull on each altar to be sacrificed. And every time they did, a voice came to him. He understood more than some children of Israel certain dimensions of the blood. Then when they set up the tabernacle, God began to talk. Exodus 29, Exodus 30, all through Exodus Leviticus. He said, this is what should happen. If any man does something wrong, Moses tell them, bring a spotless ram or a lamb and you put your hand on the head of the lamb. That means your sins are transferred to that animal. Then you cut the animal. You must let the blood fall on the altar. When that happens, your iniquity is covered. In those days, it was covered for one year. Then God told Moses, Exodus 30, just help me look at the scripture because it's a long read and I don't want to go into that. Uh, but Exodus 30, the Lord told Moses, now tell Aaron your brother, it's now the high priest, I'm consecrating him. But this is the pattern. Anytime he's coming to my presence, he must take a spotless lamb. Number one, he must wash himself. Then he must take a spotless lamb. He must put the blood on himself. He said, otherwise, a face-to-face -face encounter with me, he will die. So for your brother not to die, I don't want to see your brother. I want to see blood all over him. What attracts God? By the time you read through Exodus, the amount of blood, when they created the altar, which is similar to the altar in heaven, and Moses built the altar, the Lord demanded that sanctify even the altar itself by the blood. So God told them three places. A part of the blood must be beside the altar, pour it there. Some blood poured under the altar and some blood poured on top of the altar. In other words, Moses, I just want to see blood. And he said, when this ordinance is violated, all of you will die. If I see any man in my presence, and I don't see blood on his head, he will die. He will not survive that place. So you know the old tabernacle out here. It was divided into three parts. We have the outer courts. We have the holy, then we have the holy of holies. Those are the three dimensions. So the and the tabernacle actually represented Jesus Christ. All the colors used there, four colors, all the strands were four colors. You have blue, you have purple, you have uh, uh, white, well, you have blue, you have purple, you have uh, scarlet, and one other color like that. They all represent Jesus Christ. 
and they represent the four faces of Jesus, which is found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In Matthew, Jesus, Matthew portrayed just as the king. That's blue. Mark as a suffering man. Luke as a savior. And John as a son of God. Yes. All the, all the, uh, all the gospels look at Jesus from four different points. And those are the four manifestations of Jesus to mortal men. He is the king. He is the son of man. He is the son of God. And then he is the suffering savior who came to save the world. Did you get what I said? Yes, sir. And these are the colors you find in tabernacle. The old tabernacle was actually pointing to one man, Jesus Christ. Everything. When God told Moses the peg, they, like when you see a tent, they tread holding the peg. They tread. He said, peg it on the ground. He said, but peg it halfway. That was resurrection. Because it will be buried and it will come alive. If the peg entered fully, it will be permanent death. Are you following me? So Jesus was mirrored as a matter of hand. If you look at the tabernacle from the helicopter view, you are going to see, or area view, you are going to see that it actually has a sign of the cross. And they did not know no covenant, what they were doing. But God gave dimension to Moses. So there was the out, outer court. Levites can be there. They could be there. Now, the only room was the first room inside. That one, the priest could come there. But there was the only of holies. The most sanctified room. Even Aaron, the high priest, only the high priest, all other priests, even then they pour gallons of blood on themselves, they would die if they entered that one. Because they were not consecrated for it. Apart from blood on Aaron, when he was being consecrated, they put blood and oil on his garments. So his garment represented something. And there was power in that garment. That was why God was not a male or female chimneys. Now, when people were wondering, why did God punish Miriam? Miriam became leprous when she spoke against Moses. But she spoke against Moses with Aaron, and nothing happened to Aaron. So people have been angry with God that with some, you know, some feminine. How did God, even God, the two of them committed the sin, but only Miriam was judged. Miriam was judged because she had no garments. Yes. Ah, yeah. When God was going to kill Aaron eventually, Aaron died on Mount Hall. God told Moses, take him to the mountain. Take the garment from him and he will die. I have consecrated this garment. It smells blood and oil. Whoever wears it will not die until he puts it aside. There is a mantle you wear that protects you. I will talk about that another day. You see, there is your calling. There is also mantle. Your calling does not empower you until a mantle falls on you to endorse your calling. The power is in the mantle. The simplest way to explain it is a case of check and sign signature. You will not withdraw anything without signature. Yet, without a check, signature is useless. Did you get that? Yeah. The mantle will not come and say you are called. But you can be called for a while and the mantle might not come on you. If it does not come on you, you will not be able to. Mantle is the power that comes to back the fact that you are called. And when you are functioning where you are called, you are divinely protected there. Should someone else dare it, they might, live to, they might not live to tell the story. That's why when people cross ministry in the spirits, they can actually cross from this realm to another realm. It's, a, it's like committing suicide. When God calls you to be a prophet and you go to be an apostle or a teacher, that is serious casualty in the spirits. If God calls you to be a pastor and you love those who prophesy and you start prophesying, you will die spiritually. That's what will happen. God will have mercy on babes and he will, carry, he will forgive their trespasses. But there's a level you get to in God. There are mistakes that once you make them, there is no remedy. He will, he will do that with babes. You must have grown to a level. And then at that level, you will know what to do. You can just choose to disobey. Yes. Like Adam. He knew the instruction, but he had the fruit. He knew what he was doing. When Peter, when Paul was talking about it later, he said, Adam was not deceived. So when Eve was saying that, hey, my dear, the sharpest shed, God has been lying to us. We will not die. Eve believed what Serpent said. Adam just sat down. 
He ate because he wanted to eat. When he was done talking, Adam knew that all those gibberish, you are just lying. The serpent lied to you. I am the master over the serpent. But for some reasons, he decided to eat it. So Paul, by revelation, said that Adam was not deceived. There was nothing that the serpent said that persuaded Adam. It was the woman. And at times, as a man, you will have to be there to guide your wife. No matter how anointed the woman is, she will need a man to guide her at times. Because they yield more to emotion. And when you do at times, it looks like you are wicked. I'm not talking about those who shout, insult their wife and say things, no. But there are times that subtly you say no to certain things. And they have to understand it. This is also why it will be easy on the woman if you have been leading spiritually in reality. But if spiritually you are sleeping and it's, you like a message that says, why submit to your husband? That's the only part of the Bible that you know. So I'm telling you, they will know that your authority is, there is no authority. It's just, you are just intimidating everybody around you. But see, if you have a track record, that when you tell a woman that let's go this way, it's always leading to blessing. She will always want to follow you. And when you are right, time will prove that you are right. No matter the level of wisdom, sophistication, um, education, spirituality of a woman, she needs a man to lead her. The question is, can you provide that leadership? Leadership is not control. Leadership is leadership. It's not control. By the time you start saying, I don't know that I'm the head of this family, it means that something's wrong with your, something's already wrong with your headship. Do you need to talk about it? Shouldn't it be obvious? Because when I pray like this, when we go, I say, hey, you head. <laughs> so, so, I'm, the, I'm the head. Whatever I tell you, no. It's not a giddy brother. Leadership is leadership. It's not rulership. It's not control. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There's someone I love this song that walk and wash my sins away. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. In the, so Aaron was told, even you, the blood must be on your head for you to survive. As a matter of fact, they were not even too sure of a survivor. So part of his dressing was that he would tie a bell to himself with a long robe. So the bell will be here. It will be doing every time. So a long robe. So it will leave the rope be as long as from here to the AC. So the rope will stay outside. So it will enter. So the only way other priests will know that Baba still they live. Sound of the bell. Once the bell is not sounding again, it's dead. And since nobody can come in to carry his body, otherwise you join him. So they will use that rope to pull him out. Yeah. That was our concept. Ah, yeah, palikosia. But about five times, God repeated to Moses and Aaron, that same mercy seat where you put the blood, he said, it is from there I will talk with you. It is from there I will talk with you. Where we are going, I'm about to stop. See, even when you speak evil of somebody, you're already shedding a part of the person's blood. Since blood have a voice, every time there are voices crying against all of us, what you need is a voice crying for you. I get what I'm saying. Since all blood speaks, every blood speaks, the blood of Jesus too speaks. But it says something different. Hiya. <laughs> is somebody getting me? So everyone transferred their transgression. So there was no family in Israel that was not bringing lamb regularly. Because otherwise, they wouldn't live long. They wouldn't be able to. Then Moses himself, he wanted to read the book of the Lord to the people. He first of all took Esau, put it in blood. He put the blood upon himself, upon the book, and upon the people. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. 
this is where deities on earth they copy the remember what they call gods of the land were demons fallen angels they have also copied that from heaven when they were with god there is no idol worship that does not require blood and this is where abortion is coming from innocent babies where it is radically where they multiply the use of it uh, where they legalize it and it multiplies demons come out and invade the place it is true isn't it funny that nations that protect the rights of animals that protect the rights of trees who can't even cut down trees are the same nations endorsing abortion does that make sense you see a rabbit say you cannot shoot the rabbits you see a sister you cannot cut the tree but they say unborn children till nine months must be terminated that tells that there is someone called Lord of Darkness behind this. Yes. Bible says, being wise, they become fools. You should expect nations like that to protect everything. You protect animals from being hunted down, but you say that this one, you, you consider a tree a living thing, and you ban men from cutting down trees, but you consider a baby inside. Nonsense. It is still that demon called Molech. In the Old Testament, they used to worship Molech. Molech used to, the mode of worshiping Molech was that you would present an unborn fetus, a fetus to Molech. These ancient spirits are still alive, and many of them are alive in many European countries right now. In a modified way, they have entered computer age. And many people don't know. Demons live forever. Yes. I want to stop here. We are just having an introduction. Dear blood. Ah. The Lord accepted Jesus. Now, maybe this is where I will start from. Uh, next week. Jesus shed his blood several times. By shedding it several places. That is what you call perfect sacrifice. Even the father was pleased only when he saw Jesus with blood all over him on the cross. What is it with God and blood? Then God nodded and said that sacrifice is acceptable. Even though he still took his blood to the eternal city in heaven. But first of all on earth, the Lord watched. The Bible says he allowed it to be bruised until every part of him. And those soldiers did not know what they were doing. It started from the garden of Gethsemane. The Bible said the blood coming out, the sweat coming out was as thick as blood. It began the shed of blood, number one from there. Number two, when he got to the parlor, they put a crown of thorn on his head. Blood came out, number two. Then they plucked his beard. Blood came out from the face. That talks about shame being taken away. A Christian cannot have mental depression if you walk in the light of it because Jesus' head was crushed. Then they, so, so they sweat, number one. The blood coming from the head, number two. The blood coming from the bed, number three. Then the back, number four. Then the hand, number five. Then the feet, number six. And then the soldier took a spear. The final one, a side. And the child came out of the side. Blood and water came out. And there was no part of where blood was not dripping. And the father looked down. He couldn't see Jesus anymore. He saw a man messed up with blood. And he said, sacrifice. Let's rise. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.